Howdy folks and welcome back to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making a delicious pineapple cake from scratch. see over here making a cake from scratch makes a little bit of a mess but if you weren't doing a video you wouldn't have out quite this much stuff you're gonna need three cups of either all-purpose flour or cake flour and you can use either I happen to have cake flour today so I'm using cake flour and have that measured out here you're gonna need a teaspoon of baking powder and I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my flour so that I can get some of this stuff out of my way. A half teaspoon of salt. And I have switched to an all natural um, sea salt. It's a little healthier than regular table salt that you buy in the grocery store. But it's also a lot harder to find. Just a half teaspoon of that. We'll add that into our flour mixture. Also in our dry ingredients we're going to use a quarter of a cup of powdered milk and that's because for our liquid in this cake we're going to use pineapple juice not um, milk. And I'm going to add that into the dry ingredients too. Okay, I'm just going to kind of whisk these together a little bit to mix them up and I'm going to do it right here in this measuring cup. It'll also kind of beat up any lumps, but that cake flour usually doesn't have any lumps. Okay, that's pretty good. Then we'll set this over here out of the way for a minute. We're going to need two and a half sticks of butter. Half a stick of this is going to go in the pot for our, whoops, half stick is going to go in the pot for our filling and we're going to make our filling first and then set it aside so it can cool while we mix our cake. You're going to need four eggs, we're going to separate those in a minute, a 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple in the juice and I do recommend getting a good pineapple, spend a little money, this cake is a little bit of trouble so you want to use good ingredients. And we're going to drain this. The juice we're going to put in the cake, the pineapple goes into our filling here. We need about two tablespoons of cornstarch. Um, that's going to go into our filling. And teaspoon, teaspoon and a half or so of vanilla that we'll put in our cake. Two cups of sugar for our cake. One cup of brown sugar for our filling. We're going to start by draining our pineapple. We'll put the juice into the cake and the pineapple goes into the filling. Okay, just want to drain until you get a cup of juice out. You don't have to get every drop of juice out. And you don't want all of that juice in the filling because it goes in your cake before it bakes and you can't really get your cake done if you leave all the juice in it. Okay, I'm gonna um, put my cornstarch in with my brown sugar and kind of mix it up and then I'm gonna add that into my filling. And you want to make sure you put this in the filling before you turn the heat on because if you add cornstarch to something that's already hot it'll make lumps and they are not tasty lumps. Okay, we're just 
just going to turn this kind of on medium heat and we are going to bring it all the way to a boil and you want to keep an eye on it stir it a little you don't want it to stick to the bottom of the pan you can use a mix to make this cake just a yellow cake mix and what you would do is you would follow the directions on the box only instead of adding water you're going to use the cup of pineapple juice that you drained out of your pineapple you're still going to make the filling the same way um, put your pineapple your cup of brown sugar half a stick of butter your cornstarch um, in your pot and heat it up like this and then when we get ready to put it in the pan you'll do it the same way but a mix is fine if you want to use a mix um, while that is heating, pull my stand mixer over and we will go ahead and put our two sticks of butter for the cake in it. You do want your butter kind of room temperature so it's softer and it'll mix. Um, and I wish mine was a little bit softer than what it is now. I wish I'd have took it out of the fridge a little earlier, but you don't want it completely melted. So I would not put this in the microwave before I made the cake out of it and melt it. I'm going to add two cups of sugar to my butter. I'm also going to go ahead and add my vanilla in here. And I like vanilla so, you know, I'm going to be kind of generous with it. Anything between a teaspoon and probably two and a half teaspoons would hurt anything. Okay, we have to separate our eggs. And I'm going to do that before I start mixing this because I don't want to try and separate them while I'm mixing it. And the reason why we're separating the eggs is because we're going to whip the egg whites until they form peaks and add them in the very last thing after we get the whole cake mixed up and that will make the cake lighter and fluffier. I know they make these fancy little egg separators, but I have never had a fancy little egg separator. The way I do it is I crack the egg, well, hopefully keeping the shell semi intact. That one didn't work very well. But I just pour it from one half of the shell to the other half. Oops, until I bust it. <laughs> okay. Not supposed to bust it. Let's try that again. That's what you want. And you pour it from one half of the shell to the other one, just like that. And it usually only takes a couple of times, and you get it all separated. Okay. And we'll set these over here until we're ready to beat those up. While that's cooking, we're going to cream this um, sugar and butter together. Just kind of turn your mixer on low. If you're using a um, hand mixer, that's fine too. You can even mix it by hand, but you want to start on low and just let it mix until it creams. Okay, you can see this. It's kind of crumbly now, but it's starting to mix together. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit and mix it some more because I do want this to get just a little bit fluffy. The fluffier this gets, the better my cake will be. Okay, now you can see it's not crumbly anymore at all. It's all stuck together. That's what we're looking for. Now what I'm going to do is turn this back on kind of around medium and I'm going to add these egg yolks really slowly.
time to finish up this filling. It is about to boil. I can kind of hear it starting to bubble. And maybe on the camera you can see how it's starting to get darker spots in it. That's where it's starting to bubble and the cornstarch is starting to thicken it. You do want to make sure you kind of keep stirring it at this point because you don't want it to burn on the bottom. Nobody wants burned pineapple filling in their cake. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I don't know if you could see that color change on the camera or not, but it did darken up. And it's not super thick right now, but we're gonna take it off the heat and sit it on the back of the stove here. And let it cool down just a little bit before we add it into our cake. This would also be a good time to go ahead and turn the oven on to 350 and let it preheat. Okay, and grab our dry ingredients and our pineapple juice. And we're going to start adding this a little at a time and alternate between the pineapple juice and the dry ingredients. looking cake mix there. You want to scrape everything, the sides of your bowl and the top of your beater and everything off and then beat it just a little bit to get that stuff in there. Alright, I'm going to take this bowl off of my stand mixer now and move it out of the way. Now we're going to beat our egg whites, and I only have one bowl for my stand mixer. If you have two, certainly use your stand mixer for this, but rather than take time to clean that up, I'm just going to use a hand mixer to beat the egg whites. And literally all you do is beat them until they get stiff. Okay, that's what you're looking for right there. You can see that they are completely stiff and I think that's about all the air I'm going to be able to get into them. And what you do with this is you just add it to your batter and fold it in. We don't want to over mix this because we don't want to lose the air that's in it. And that'll make your homemade cake mixes light and fluffy and keep them from being dense. If you've ever made a homemade cake and it came out dense, this is the trick right here. Somebody didn't tell you about it. I remember when I was a little girl, um, I probably was about 12 years old and it was a rainy day and I was all alone in the house with my granny. And she said, what you want to do? Because I was bored out of my mind. And I said, I don't know. She said, well, let's go make a cake. And I said, but there ain't no cake mix. I ain't not made the last one. And she said, youngin, I don't need no cake mix. Make no cake. Uh, well, my mom and all my aunts always use cake mixes. And I think they were kind of new still at that time, but still they were popular. So we went in the kitchen and there was a serious lack of ingredients or what I would consider a serious lack of ingredients, but not to my granny. She said the basic things you need for making a cake are flour, 
eggs, and a little baking powder. And then anything else you put in it, well, milk. Anything else you put in it, that's just extra. So we made a maple cinnamon cake. And the only cinnamon she had was some whole cinnamon sticks. And she didn't have no fancy cinnamon grinder or anything like that. I busted it up with a, the end of a butter knife. So our cake had like little rocks in it. And she made a maple frosting to go on it. And it was delicious. <laughs> no measuring, no recipe. Just put stuff in a bowl and mix it up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to bake this in a springform pan. And I'm using one 10 inch springform pan. You can certainly use um, a couple of 8 or even 9 inch round pans. You could bake it in a sheet pan. Whatever you like. But, um... This spring form pan, I find, makes it really easy to get this cake out because it is kind of prone to sticking. And I'm going to grease this with some olive oil pretty generously, but it's still going to be kind of prone to sticking. And also, because I'm using this spring form pan, I'm likely to lose a little, so I'm going to sit it on a cookie sheet before I. My oven's preheated. <laughs> I'm likely to lose a little in this spring form pan, so I'm going to sit it on a cookie sheet before I put it in the oven. Okay. What you want to do is you want to put about half of your batter in the bottom of your pan. This makes wonderful cupcakes too, and they're really pretty decorated. Now I'm going to put my filling in and you can see it has started to cool and it's pretty thick. But we just want to spread this out even all over our cake. It does try to push the cake out from the center and I did not mean to drop that all right there in the middle. If you can kind of add it around the edges, it works a little bit better. I'm going to take a spoon and take some of this that's settled in the center and kind of move it around the edges because I do want all of my filling covered with cake. Okay, now we're going to bake this between 35 and 45 minutes. Obviously, because it has that filling in it, your toothpick test is not going to work with this filled cake. So we're going to use the finger spring test. And if you watch some of my other videos, you know what that is, but I'll show you again. You just put this in your oven and we'll come back and check on it in 30-45 minutes. Show you what it looks like when it's all done and we'll get it out of that pan our cake is done baking now it actually took me 50 minutes to bake this cake and i wasn't sure quite how long it would take to bake this in that 10 inch pan if you were dividing it up and putting it in two 80 inch pans probably 35 to 40 minutes would be plenty what you're looking for is this beautiful golden brown color and do the finger spring test you can see when I touch it with my finger, it bounces, it doesn't jiggle, and it doesn't squish down at all. That's what you're looking for. 
if you touch it and it makes a little dent, then your cake is not done. You want to be able to touch it and it bounce right back and you don't want to hear a squishing sound either. If you hear a squishing sound, it's not done. Uh, don't, you know, poke your finger all the way through it. And you can see little bits of our filling coming up through the edge. That's perfectly fine. We are going to let this cool on the rack for hmm, probably 30 minutes before we even try to take it out of this pan. And you can eat it just like it is. It is absolutely delicious. But today I'm making it for a birthday cake. Alex, my third daughter, is turning 25 years old and we made a delicious homemade cream cheese frosting to go on it, which is a wonderful combination with the pineapple. And you can check out the video for that cream cheese frosting or by clicking right there while your cake is cooling. But we'll be back in just a few minutes and we'll show you what it looks like all frosted. Here's our cool cake after we took it out of the pan. And you can see we've got a little bit of our filling showing through here, but that's okay. We'll cover that up with this delicious cream cheese frosting. That really looks good and it's going to taste just as good as it looks. I really like the way that cream cheese frosting spreads on there even though our cake wasn't even because we made the filled cake. The frosting looks good over top of it. So thanks for joining us again in the Hillbilly Kitchen. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Check out the cream cheese frosting recipe. And happy birthday Alex!